AWS IAM Access Analyzer is such an important feature for securing your AWS account or your AWS organization of AWS accounts. But hang on a second, I'm just saying, I thought you were teaching us hacking. Why are you teaching us about AWS security? Well, I am 14 times AWS certified, so no one else better to learn Amazon Web Services cloud security than for Mr. Hacker Loy. And yeah, I literally hacked it all AWS certs. Now there are three key parts to AWS IAM Access Analyzer. And the first part is what we call as the external access. And what external access means over here is, say for example, you have your own AWS account and you would have numerous resources. In this instance, we have a specific S3 bucket. And this S3 bucket has been shared and made accessible to AWS account B, say owned by Mr. Hacker Loy. In that case, what happens here is you want to detect across all of your resources, specifically resources that have resource-based policies, which one of them has been made externally accessible outside of the AWS account, or the other great part is your AWS organizations that can have, in this case, numerous AWS accounts. And within them, you want to find out which of this AWS accounts and their associated resources are made accessible to your best friend forever, Mr. Hacker Loy. And then from there, once you can detect it, you can remove those external accesses. Now, the second part of this is what we call as the unused access. And what it means here is that we are looking at roles, we are looking at IAM users, we are looking at permissions, and what you do in this case, you specify a window, the period of time in this case where the roles or the users or the permissions have been unused. So say for example, you're looking at 30 days period of where all these roles or users or permissions have not been used, and with that, you can begin cleaning up and tightening the permissions within your AWS accounts. And for number three, it is about generating policies based on what has happened. In this situation, we are using a specific service called CloudTrail that is logging who can do what. So it has the events of, say for example, Mr. Hacker Loy, who is in the AWS account, and he is creating numerous EC2s, creating numerous S3 buckets, using all of these specific APIs. And we're looking at them and seeing, okay, based on the usage by this specific role or user, we're able to fit the new IAM policy based on what has been done for the specified period of time. And instead of giving, say for example, full admin privileges, over time, we notice that this user is actually using significantly lower scope of accesses, then in that case, we can reduce the access tightening permissions within the AWS account. And of course, before we go any further, we have to ensure that you're putting on your thinking cap. And what has happened here is I've logged in to my AWS account and we are on the S3 service, simple storage service over here. And you can see that I have a specific bucket called Hacker Loy Test Bucket. I'll go ahead and click onto it. And you can see under the permissions tab, we have the following of the bucket policy. And this specific bucket policy here allows this specific AWS account access. And it's giving the access of S3 all. So we're able to run all of the S3 actions against the Hackle Loy test bucket. And you can see that from this specific AWS account, we have the account ID or 5469-7690-3136. And what has been shared here is a separate principle, a separate AWS account, and we want to detect that. So you can see right here, I'm logged in to a separate AWS account, which is 12721419162. So this is an external AWS principal who is going to be issuing a specific AWS S3 instruction, which is to the target S3 bucket to see if we have permission. So in this case, I enter AWS S3 LS S3, followed by hacker Lloyd test bucket. I'll hit enter on this. And you can see the following we are able to look at all of the objects within the bucket. And what I can do now is say, go ahead and download one of the objects. So I can enter AWS S3, copy S3, hacker alloy test bucket, followed by password.txt, because that 
looks like a pretty interesting file. And now I'll save it over into password.txt as well. Hit enter on that. And I can do a cat followed by password.txt and see what we get. So we can see the following. The password is hackaloy is very handsome. So we're able to download the object. Now going back to the origin bucket, there will be such resource-based policies that have been shared externally across the AWS account, particularly if you have numerous users who are logging into your AWS account to do work. And in that case, you can go over into Identity and Access Management Service. All right, so once we load over into IAM, you can see on the left, I have the following of external access under Access Analyzer. I'll go in and click onto that, and you can see right here, I've already enabled the access analyzer. All right, so we can of course go ahead and click on the manage analyzer or you can create a new one. All right, and then of course we have certain rules, we have certain tags. And the most important part is what we call as zone of trust. So the zone of trust is situated or targeted towards this specific AWS account. So it will scan the resource-based policy looking for principles that are outside of this specific AWS account ID. And going back over to the summary page, you can see the following external access findings last updated 13 hours ago. And I can scroll down further. There are 10 cross account access. I can scroll down further. There are 10 active findings. And we can see which resources have this finding. So in this case, we've got an S3 bucket. We have identity and access management too. And we can see all of this different information. I can go ahead and click on the view all active findings. And from here, we can see the following. So this one has a hacker law test bucket. I can see the external principle. In this case, we have the external principle from script kitty Loy. I can go ahead and click onto that. So clicking over onto the finding, we can see the following information. Okay, so what I can show you here in this example is that we have the ability to rescan. We can look at a finding ID, who is the external principle, any specific resource control policies and so on. And on the right, we have a lot. If you recall earlier from the bucket policy, we put S3 followed by asterisk. So that means we're giving all S3 actions. So for example, they can have the delete bucket, delete objects and all this different information. So you can see it's fully accessible by the external account. And what we can do now is to go ahead and revoke that access. And if you see the next step over here, is this intended? Do I really want to give this principle the access? If it's not intended, then we can go to the specific bucket policy and revoke the access. So I'll show and demonstrate that to you by going over into the S3 bucket once more, go under permissions, and we can scroll down further and we can click on to edit of the bucket policy. And from here, I can go ahead and empty this bucket policy. I'll remove everything over here. Scroll all the way down and click Save Changes. All right, so that you can see right here, we have now made the change, successfully edited bucket policy. So if I scroll down further, you can see the bucket policy is empty. And by default, if it is empty, it means that it's not going to be accessible. Now, heading back to the external principle, I will do this one more, which is to, for example, list down all of the objects within the bucket. I hit Enter on this. And you can see right now, access denied because we do not have permission anymore. So we have clean up the resource-based policy. In this instance, it will be the S3 bucket. Now for the second part, our second feature is going to be under unused access. So I'll go ahead and click Analyzer and I'll select onto unused access analysis. It will auto fill for me on the name of the analyzer. And for the tracking period, I'm going to go ahead and select all right, in this case, over into say three days. And I'll scroll down further. All right, we have the following of monitors, all IM users and roles in your accounts, unused access findings do not change based on region. Of course, in this case, we have the Asia Pacific Singapore. And of course, we have the current account. Any exclusion, all right, so we can exclude certain IM users or roles to be excluded. I'll scroll down further. And of course, this is a paid service. Go in and click Create Analyzer and it has successfully created the analyzer over here. And now we're looking and pending for defining as it analyzes across the AWS users and roles. 
a few moments later. So within a couple of minutes, it scanned across our IAM roles, IAM users, as well as permissions. And we can see right here, we have all these different finding types. So we have unused role, and we can see unused permissions. All right, so we're able to click into the finding ID. Say for example, in this case, I click onto the EC2 role with the unused permission. So I can scroll down further and look at the following, okay? So we have like CloudWatch, CloudWatch Logs, EC2, IAM, Inspector, and all this has been unused for more than three days, which is part of the finding. And in that situation, we also have the last used. All right, so in this case, it means that, say for example, you have provision, CloudWatch access, but it has not been used for 146 days, or it has never been used. In that situation, you can go over into the permissions, or the target finding and begin your cleanup by saying, if it's not used, I might as well remove them. So your permissions are much more clean, much more tightened over time. And for feature number three, which is going to be generating a policy based on what has been used. So in that case, I can say go over into EC2 role, I'll click over onto it. And when you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see something called the generate policy based on CloudTrail events. So CloudTrail is logging all of the who can do what across your AWS account. So I'm going to click onto generate policy and I'll select over into the time period. In this case, perhaps I can select over into seven days and I have the cloud trail trail to be analyzed in this situation. My cloud trail is going to be in the Singapore region. I'll select onto that. I have a specific trail here called single account trail. I'll click onto that. I'll specify the region. So in that case, perhaps I can be looking at United States, North Virginia. I can also be targeting the Singapore region. And with that, I will use an existing service role and I'll go and click on the generate policy. So what it's going to do is to go over into Cloud Trail Trail, look at all these different API calls that has been made from this specific role and then generate a new policy for us. And when you scroll all the way down, you can see under the generate policy based on Cloud Trail events, we have the requested on, time period of activity, as well as the status of in progress. A few moments later. And the magic has completed. You can see the following of policy generated. Let's scroll all the way down and look at the view generated policy. And once you click onto it, it will ask you to review the permissions. And it has the actions included in the generated policy. So the service, in this case, we have the actions used like get deployable, patch snapshot, and so on and so forth. So all this were the API calls that were made by the EC2. And are there any specific actions that you would like to add? All right, so that's optional. So perhaps you're saying for this specific role, I am trying to do a new set of permissions for it. So you can add like EC2 messages, you can add like S3 API actions and so on and so forth. So once you're done with that, go ahead and click on the next. It has the following of customized permissions. All right, so this were the ones that were created for us earlier. And you can see the following on row 20 as well as row 28. So that's the part where we have specific region in specific account. So let me just go ahead and scroll to the right a little. All right, so let me go ahead and change this up a little more. So you can see here, we have, for example, SSM, and then we have the region as well as the account. All right, so all these are the ones that you can update to it. So in my case, say for example, I have the SSM get parameter, we have the describe document, so perhaps I don't need that. So I can clean it up over here, and then that will remove the error messages. So we have the SSM actions, and once we're done with that, we can scroll all the way down, click next, and you can see the following, okay? This is the generated policy, so you can give the policy a name, or right, you have a description to it, and then we have the permissions defined in this policy, any text, and it will directly attach the role to the EC2. So I can go in and click create and attach policy, and you can see right here, policy has been created, and policy is now successfully attached to the role. So when I scroll down further, you can see the following over here. We have the generated policy. So with the newly generated policy, you can begin the cleanup by removing all those other 
unused iron policy that are attached to this specific role. So with that, I hope you have learned something useful, something valuable in upgrading and improving your cloud security skills. And stay tuned for more article hacking and AWS security tutorials coming your way.